the ultimate lighting guide. Recently, I made a lighting tutorial and it was received very well. I want to thank this person, Xylon, for taking the time to write down 9 tips under that previous video in order to help the Blender community. Good sport! Tip number 1. IES Textures IES stands for Illuminating Engineering Society. The IES file stores directional intensity information into an IES file. I've left a link in the description of where I get my IES textures. So go ahead and download some interesting textures and let's open up Blender to see what it's actually doing. So first we are going to bring in a point light. And then we want to use nodes. Note, you can only do this in cycles. Once you've clicked on use nodes, you can see in the shader editor that a setup has been created. So I'm going to press shift A and select IES texture. And there we can go to our folder where we have downloaded all our IES textures and just simply pick one of them. Plug the IES texture into the strength. And now you can also change the color by adding a black body node and plugging it into the color. Tip number two, shadows. What is light without shadows? You can make an area lamp and turn the spread all the way down to one. So when you press use nodes, we can make our own texture just like you would do normally. So I'm going to add in a Voronoi texture and I'm going to make it look like some sort of rectangular glass. You can play around with the settings and once you've got something that you like, you actually got some pretty interesting looking shadows and that all from an area lamp itself. You can turn the spread back to six or eight to make the shadow a little bit soft. Tip number three, HDRI switcheroo. So the lighting of one HDRI is good, but the background is not so good. So we are going to use the lighting from one HDRI and then use the background from another to achieve the desired result. So how can we use the same lighting while changing the background? It's actually very easy. We'll make an environment texture by going over to the world settings in the shader tab. Press Shift A and bring in an environment texture. There we can choose our HDRI. Now we're going to duplicate this entire setup and place it below. Make a mix shader by selecting both of these and pressing Ctrl 0. Now that we've got a mix shader, all we need is a light path node and we're going to use the is camera ray and plug it into the factor. Now, as you can see, the top slot is our actual lighting, while the bottom one is our background. Tip number four, ambient occlusion. Make a model with some corners and some depth. And now we go over to the shader editor. Press shift A and add in an ambient occlusion. You can plug it into the factor of the mix shader and we're going to plug two different principal BSDFs into it as well. Now bring in a color ramp and plug it in between the ambient occlusion and your mix shader. You can play around with the distance on the AO node and you can also play around with your color ramp to achieve a desired result. Because we've plugged it into the mix shader, we can use it as a factor to mix between two different textures. Tip number five, make your own HDRI. If you're like me and you make movies using CGI and VFX, then it can be quite helpful to have accurate lighting. So I always make sure that whenever I'm going to use 3D, I will make my own HDRI map using nothing but Google Street View. I'll show you right now how it works. So first of all, you need to download the Google Street View app on your phone, and then we can make a 360 degree photo. Make sure to aim your phone at the dots. Once you're done, you can see that Street View actually crashes. But don't worry, the file is still there. You just need to reopen the application and go over to this tab and then you will see your 360 degree photo. It is in JPEG, so it's not necessarily the highest quality, but it doesn't matter for this case. Send the HDRI to your mail and open it on your computer. Credits to Blender Daily for the next part, so check him out as well. But first we want to have accurate lighting. This HDRI doesn't give us strong shadows, so what we can do to fix that is add in three matte nodes. One of them is going to be on power, the other is add and the other is multiply. Set the power to 20, set the add to 0.01, and set the multiply to 50. As you can see now, we have an accurate HDRI which lights our subject with correct reflections. <laughs> Tip number six, bounce lighting. Bounce lighting determines how many times light bounces off a surface. In real life, this goes on infinitely, but in Blender, it sure as hell doesn't. Here we can see the difference between zero bounce lights and 32 bounce lights. At zero, the shadow doesn't go around the corner because it doesn't interact with any of the objects and doesn't bounce. So at 32, we get the best result. Tip number seven, layer weight emission. First, we'll make a new texture. Go over here and click on the principal BSDF. Press E and it automatically changes to an emission shader. In the shader editor, we must add a layer weight node and plug the facing in the color of our emission shader. Here is a cool trick to get some random colors quickly. Add a color ramp and change it from RGB to HSV. Then change near to far. Make both sides of the color ramp red and a rainbow pattern unfolds. This creates some interesting lighting effects. Tip number eight, basic lighting tricks. Lighting from the front doesn't accentuate features of the face, so we have to make a three-point lighting setup. 
I'll turn off this sun lamp and set the world lighting to zero. First I enable my key light. It is placed at around a 45 degree angle from the character's face. Then we make our edge light behind the subject in juxtaposition to our key light. This gives a nice glowing edge and it separates the character from the background. And the last light is to fill up areas of the face or model where there is almost no light because it is very hard to change light data afterwards in comp when there is no data. From above it looks like this. We have a subject and three lights. Tip number nine, light groups. First we're going to the view layer properties. Scroll down and create light groups. I'm going to create three of them. One for the key light, fill light, and one for the edge light. Once we've done that, we're going to name our lights to their function. So this one is the key light, etc. Now click on a light and go over to object properties. Under shading, you can assign it to a light group. Do this for all the lights. Click on the output properties icon and set your file format to OpenEXR multilayer. Pick a folder and render your animation. You can also render a single image. Just make sure that after it has rendered, it is an EXR format right here. I use DaVinci Resolve for compositing and I'll quickly go through the process of setting it up and showing what you can do with it. Click on the Fusion tab in the bottom of Resolve's interface. Now drag your image into this area and it automatically creates a media in and a media out. The first thing you may notice is how dark the render looks, so we'll have to adjust our gamma. Go over here and press Edit. Set the color gamma to 2.2. Do this for the other side as well. Over here to the right, we can select our few layers. The one we just dragged in is a combined one, so I'll cut it loose and duplicate it three times. I'll change the layers for all of them to the key light, fill light and edge light. Now we have to connect them all together before we can work on it. Select the key light node and press on this icon right here. It is called the channel boolean. Plug the fill light into the green socket. Nothing changes, because we have to change two settings in the channel boolean node. On the right side set alpha to do nothing and on the operation select add. Copy the channel boolean and connect the edge light into it. As you can see, we have retrieved our initial image, but all parts are separated, so we can work on them individually. Let's work on our edge light first. Let's say the client doesn't like the color of the edge light. We can now easily change it without rendering the entire scene again. Just add a color corrector node by pressing right here and change the color. Now let's say the edge light is too much for this specific case. Then we can add a mask, plug it in and feather it. They also stack up so you can add multiple masks. Add some glow using the soft glow node and tweak some settings. I found the render to be a bit too dark, so I went to the key light node and added a brightness and contrast. Adjust the gain and this is the before and after. Now if you want to render this out, add a gamut node and set the output space to simplify it as RGB. Also turn off this grid icon right here. Now go to the edit page and it works. Some denoise here and we've got a nice, easily adjustable composition. Tip number 10, easy HDRI. Start in Google and type in easy HDRI. I'm going to click on this link by code of art. In the top right, you can click on buy, enter the amount that you would like to donate if you want to donate at all. If not, enter zero and go through the process and download the file. Now open Blender and go to add-ons under edit, preferences, add-ons. Click on install and select the file we just downloaded. Now enable easy HDRI in the add-on tab. Press N to open the side panel. You can find Easy HDRI on the bottom. Press on the folder icon and select the folder where your HDRIs are stored. Click OK and now you can see the thumbnails of each HDRI. Changing them is also really easy. You simply have to press them. So if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and I'll see you the next time.